put an equally brave but untrained soldier in the front line and he will look like a woman. Cicero. This gives a very good impression on how the Romans thought about training. Training served many purposes like ensuring combat readiness, discipline and unit cohesion, serving as a political tool in foreign and domestic affairs, improving and maintaining the infrastructure of the empire. To become a fully enlisted soldier in the army, every recruit had to pass basic training. It was performed daily for at least four months. It ensured that the recruit was fit for the duty in the Roman army. Thus, each recruit had to pass several proficiency tests. Recruits failing those tests received different diet and notes in their records. Whereas basic training was probably more intense and fundamental, the regular training was similar. It covered individual and collective aspect as well as combat and non-combat training. Individual training consists of weapons training, including close combat and ranged weapons, physical exercise like swimming, running and jumping. Collective training covered improving coordination like keeping the ranks close and parading, construction training like digging ditches and planting palisades, and mock fights where one party tries to dislodge another party defending with shields. Three times a month, infantry and cavalry together went on a route march, with full equipment. This march was not just going from one destination to another, it was basically a small military exercise that covered various maneuvers. And after reaching the destination, a camp with ditches and ramparts was constructed. Furthermore, large-scale military exercises with other forces were conducted periodically. And regular inspections served as quality control. We know about Emperor Hadrian that he visited and inspected large scale exercises, giving reports on the performances of units, including praise and criticism. But Hadrian put a strong emphasis on training and discipline, thus, he was probably an exception rather than the rule. To ensure proper training, facilities and specialists are needed. There were different training areas for infantry and cavalry. Usually, training was performed outside. But in case of very poor weather, special training buildings were available to perform the activities indoors. Additionally, there were special areas for training aspects like camp building, fort building, siege works, artillery practice and bridge building. Furthermore, there were several specialists for drill instructions, weapons and cavalry training. The constant exercises and marching helped in maintaining combat readiness, physical fitness and unit cohesion. Or as Varanius put it, trained by sweating, puffing and panting, exposed to summer heat and bitter cold and an open sky, the soldiers become accustomed to the future hardships of real fighting. During construction training, soldiers often build roads and other important projects. The construction of towers, forts and defense lines was performed by the infantry, whereas the cavalry guarded them. Construction and engineering was an aspect of Imperial Roman doctrine. Fast construction of bridges and other structures should remind barbarians of their inferiority, thus deterring them from attacking. Training in the Imperial Roman army was a crucial and complex process that didn't just focus on the ability of the soldiers to fight in battle, but to succeed in enduring campaigns and thus maintaining the capabilities of the empire to wage and win wars. Thank you for watching, please like, comment and subscribe and see you next time.